Hey y'all, Jill here and welcome back to Whispering Willow Farm. So our dried flower season is starting to shift away and we are really starting to ramp up our dahlias. But I wanted to share with you guys how I am drying and storing my cut flowers. Um, this is something we've been getting asked a lot. I've been talking about how we were growing a ton of dried flowers this year and there's been a lot of questions. And so I wanna answer those questions, share with you guys my easy process and in case you are wanting to include dried flowers in your cut flower garden next year, or maybe you have some right now, I um, mean, you're just not sure what to do with them. So the first thing I'm gonna address is, Jill, what are you doing with all of these dried flowers? This is probably the most common question I'm getting asked. And we are actually drying all these to make wreaths, to make ornaments, to make forever bouquets. So that's the great thing about a dried flower is that there are so many other things you can do with them. You can make flower crowns, you can make boutonnieres, you can make arrangements. The list goes on and on and on. And so we're gonna be testing this out this year, hoping to ship some of these forever bouquets. I mean, the great thing is too, is maybe you've got a cut flower garden, but you've noticed that some of your blooms have over bloom. So they're not ideal for cutting for a bouquet, but that means they could be perfect for drying. So it's a great way to just eliminate waste on your farm. Um, and so here are some beautiful status. You can see they dried great, but I'm gonna share with you how easy this process is and address some of those questions that we've been getting in. All right, so the first thing I want to address, I brought this bucket up here and my husband goes, wow, those look really pathetic. So let's talk through this for a second. I harvested these last night. As you guys can see, I have a baby in tow. So I wasn't able to actually do anything with them. And what happened is they became uh, wilted, right? They're limp. Do not toss these out. If you harvest your flowers and you are not immediately at a place or a space where you can do something with them, they are not ruined. So while they look limp right now and pathetic, as my husband would say, once we hang these upside down, they're gonna straighten up. You're gonna not even be able to tell that anything has happened. You can see right here how beautiful this amaranth is. And the same thing happened. I harvested this the night before. It looked limp, just like what you see in the bucket after being hung up for just a couple of hours, it stiffened up, straightened up. So one, don't worry about that. Um, but one thing, you're going to first go harvest your flowers. Um, ideal time, just like with any other flowers, harvest you know early in the morning, later in the evening. And then what I'm going to do is go in and strip off the foliage. Now, with this amaranth particularly, I'm stripping off most of the leaves because we deal with a pest really bad. So if you have amaranth that you're growing to dry and you don't have any damage on your leaves, keep them. Um, they actually are nice fillers for uh, different wreaths and ornaments and things like that. But all of mine are too damaged. Um, so I go ahead and I just cut off with my pruners or strip with my hands all of the foliage. So let's start there. All right, so once I have stripped my foliage a good bit with a flower like, you know, status, straw flower, uh, celosia, zinnias, I'm stripping the foliage up until about the top inch. Everything else I'm gonna strip. Ideally, I did this to show you guys, but all of this is taking place out in the field. So I'm harvesting, stripping foliage, and then I'm cutting them to length and bundling them out there. So you will just need some you know, rubber bands. I just use the small ones. We buy these in bulk off of Uline. Um, and then go ahead and cut to length. Now the amaranth have a bit thicker stalk, so I do not bundle as many. But all of my other bundles are usually in bundles of 10. One thing you wanna be mindful of is the more you crowd it, the longer it's going to take to dry out. And you might have more issues with excessive moisture and mold. So I am typically, you know, depending on the flower, but most of the time bundling in tins and I'm doing all of that out in the field. You can see they're all cut to length. It just makes it a lot easier. All right, so you guys can see here, the stems are all cut to length. They're nice and rubber banded. And here we go. So as far as what you need to actually dry flowers, you need some rubber bands, 
scissors or pruners to make sure you're cutting them to length. And then you need to just figure out what is your method for hanging them. Now, there are some things to be mindful of. You do not want to hang them in direct sunlight. That is going to compromise the color. So if you've maybe hung yours in front of a window and you notice that the color didn't stay, it didn't keep the integrity of that color, that is why. The sun is going to bleach it out. Now, if you're wanting to intentionally bleach your flowers, this is a great natural alternative. So some of my Flamingo Feather Celosia, um, I have put in windows to intentionally bleach it for different crafts that I'm making, and that's a great option. But if not, you want to make sure that you are hanging these in an area that does not get a lot of sunlight. So you can see here, we have got these craft wires hung up in our hallway, and we're just using these clips right here to attach to the rubber band and attach to these wires. We're hanging them in our hallway that does not get good light. We're hanging them above our table, which does not get direct sunlight. And we also have them hung up in our living room above our couch. These are areas that are not getting exposure to harsh sun. Uh, we're also, once these dried, are immediately storing them. So these are just things that we are not having to worry about. Now, because we're drying a lot of these flowers, and we're drying a large quantity of these flowers, we are buying these craft wires. They come from Ikea. You can find them other places online. It's just to hang artwork. There are a lot of other things you can use. A lot of people um, will hang them on their ceilings. Uh, for us, this is just the best option, but you don't have to be fancy here. Just think about what material do you already have that you can use, um, and if it is worth it for you just to invest in these affordable craft wires, I say go ahead and do that. So once you've bundled them up, you've cut them to length, you have the place in your home uh, that you're going to be hanging them, you're literally just going to hang them upside down. Now, how long does it take to dry a flower, Jill? This is also a common question I'm getting asked. That is very dependent on the flower. So this bundle of status is going to dry a lot faster then this bundle of amaranth. This bundle of amaranth has way more. It's super bushy. It has more moisture in it. So it's going to take a longer time. So once you've noticed your stem is completely dried, periodically I'll come and I'll check and I'll just figure out is it um, crisp, is it dried? If not, let it hang because if you even have a little bit of moisture in a flower and you go to store it, it is going to ruin and compromise that whole box of flowers. So for me, when in doubt, let it hang a little bit longer, but you can tell the structure, the integrity of the entire plant is going to change. Amaranth is one of those that is just gonna take a little bit longer because it is such a big plant, which is why I recommend bundling them in smaller groups so that they do dry faster. So real quick, I'm just gonna share with you some of the flowers that I am drying and some of the resources I am leaning on in this season. Um, so we have dried sunflowers, status, celosia, straw flowers, zinnias. Uh, we've got a lot of ornamental grasses, craspedia, uh, bunny tails. We have done, obviously, the amaranth. I'm trying to look around in my house real quick. A lisianthus we've been testing. Um, and so there are a lot of flowers that you can dry if you aren't sure. I just encourage you test it out. I did recently buy a book called The Wreath Room, which is a fantastic reference if you're wanting to know um, what flowers do really well. If you don't wanna grow them, but you wanna source them out. Um, it talks about storing, it talks about growing them in the seasons. We actually have it right here. <clears throat> it is Designing with Dried Flowers by Hannah Rose and Rivers Muller. Such a great book. I'll put it down in the description. Um, and it even tells you different arrangements and things you can do with those flowers. But if you're wanting to kind of dabble into dried flowers and you're trying to figure out what can I even dry, this is a really great resource. But once you've hung them up and they've dried, let's move on to storing because this is also really important. If you've grown the flowers, you've taken the time to dry them, but then they don't last in storage, then it really all is in vain. And this process is a lot simpler than you might think. 
So when it comes to storing your blooms, what do you need to know? First of all, if you plan on using them immediately, so let's say for instance, I grew these this summer, this fall, I plan on using them all up. You don't have to worry about storage. You can leave them hung um, and they will work just fine. This is just if you're growing a bulk amount or you want them to last even longer. But if you're using them for decoration in your home, uh, depending on where it is in your home, they will last a year or more. I've got wreaths that I've had for several years now still holding the integrity of the color but if you are needing to box some of these up because you have an excess which is where I find myself in you're gonna want a cardboard box and the reason that you want a cardboard box is that it's going to allow moisture to escape again you do not want any moisture moisture when it comes to these is going to uh, mean mold and mold is going to ruin your blooms and you're going to have to toss them which obviously we do not want um, and so grab yourself a cardboard box you're not going to close it you're going to leave it open um, and we are just going to be storing this depending on your humidity levels um, we'll determine on where you keep these we'll probably keep these down in our basement um, and use them up throughout you know the next year or so but when you are putting them in here one, don't overfill your box. And when you are putting them in, alternate which way you're putting them in. So I've got some straw flower here, and you can see here I've got the buds and the blooms on one side, and then I'm taking my next bundle and I am alternating that. Um, I will go ahead and give mine a little push, but I don't want to stack a bunch in here because I don't want it to compromise the flower itself. But then I also don't want, um, I want there to be some sort of airflow. And so when you start packing it in, uh, you really start eliminating that, which is when problems can set in. So make sure you have some cardboard boxes. Um, other than that, it is that simple. So typically when you're cutting, you know, cut flowers for bouquets, um, they are 12 to 18 inches. That's kind of standard. Well, that means these are pretty long. I mean, this is a pretty uh, long bundle and you will need to be mindful of that when it comes to the box, right? You need a big enough box. I find I like the shallow boxes. I'm not ever using the big deep ones because I'm not wanting to stack that many dried flowers in there. But one thing is to ask yourself, how am I actually gonna use this? So I am reserving some of these for bouquets, uh, forever bouquets where I will want a longer stem length. But most of my straw flowers, I'm actually going to be using these in wreaths. So I'm not actually going to be utilizing the entire stem. So I'm going to make these in smaller um, links just because it's going to make packaging. So you might notice sometimes I've just got these small little bundles that I'm hanging up because it's lighter. Um, they're going to be easier to dry because there's not as much that needs to dry. And I know that these I'm only going to be using for ornaments and wreaths. So I'm just going to be using this part right here. I'm not going to utilize really the stem at all. So you can cut shorter links to make them easier for packaging. So just ask yourself, what is it that I'm using these blooms for? Be mindful of that when you are sourcing out your boxes. For us, anytime we get packages shipped to the house, we're saving them, recycling them, um, and it's just a great way to use them up. But we've been getting asked a ton um, what our plan is with these dried flowers. Um, I certainly do not know everything about dried flowers, but I know they've been super easy for me to grow. I've loved growing them. I've loved drying them. The process has been pretty seamless once you get into a routine. Um, and so I wanted to share with you guys my process for cutting them, um, drying them, and then storing them. So if you guys have any additional questions, just leave them in the comments and I will be happy to answer them. But Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll talk to you soon.